to those who are already connected with us and those who are yet to get connected. The topic today is on the pure theory of law. What is the pure theory of law? Who coined the pure theory of law? And is it relevant? Absolutely. Pure theory of law was coined by Professor Hans Kelsen, a Jew German born, and one who took us through the pure science of law and one of the key founders of legal, uh, legal positivism and the analytical jurisprudence as known to us till today. This is one of the reasons for which we still uphold the concepts founded within the normative sense of Professor Kelsen. Professor Kelsen was born in 1881 and he died in 1973. But before his demise, Professor Kelsen left behind untold monumental literature on the jurisprudence. He is the professor of jurisprudence as well as a key legal consultant of the United Nations and this explains the biography of Professor Kelsen to us even today. However, the punchline of Professor Kelsen is predicated and premised on the concept of the pure theory of law, law as pure science as opposed to law and morality. However, in his normative sense, Kelsen takes us through the meaning of norms, the scientific meaning of the rules and the principles that are founded within the knowledge of law as we, uh, as we get from the very scholars that founded legal positivism and other scholars in other fields. However, still Kelsen in 1926 in his lectures on the normative science is very clear on what he wanted to make us understand that the law is organized and scientifically arranged in a manner that it offers the consistency or legality. In Again, in his normative sense, Kelsen is alive to the fact that the definition of law is dwindling. In 1934, in his publication on the pure theory of law, a book that was translated in several international languages and widely read, was about the way Kelsen saw the law as separated from other lines of thought, such as knowledge taken from sociology, for instance, anthropology, politics, sociology, as well as from philosophy. And he had in mind a scientific approach using scientific methods to arrive at the scientific truth of the law, using the approach of knowledge in terms of cause and effect to understand the law. Even in this there are certain difficulties that we cannot wish away in the legal scholarship. And here again we find uh, Kelsen taking us through the separation of law from other areas of sciences, the separation also of law from the 
morality. However, he disagreed with some of his predecessors and the forerunner in the pure theory of law is John Austin. John Austin, professor of law at London School of Law, proved to us that law is what the government says it is. In his definition predicated on the philosopher of Kant, the categorical imperative, the ontological philosophy, and uh, moral philosophy, Austin defines the law as command, as imposition, and as coercion. Well, whether Austin is right or not, that is a subject for another lecture. However, his definition of law as command or a chain of commands from the uncommanded commander and in this case the sovereign uh, that enacts the law and enforces the law and sanctions the law and law is meant to be punitive and to those who disobey it. Well, uh, not with, withstanding the positions of other legal philosophers on this very definition, Kelsen comes up quickly to dismiss the fact that law can only be understood by embedding the law with the government, with the politics, eh, and with the legislature. Law scientifically should be read the way it is without referring to other authorities be beyond the law or outside the law. In the normative sense of Kelsen and his pyramid of laws and the hierarchy of laws, Kelsen is the best teacher when it comes to the understanding of the juridic order, the legal order, and as well as having some kind of logical and systematic organization within the law, which of course should speak by itself. Well, whether Kelsen is right or wrong, it is a subject for another sitting. But from where I sit, I can tell you for sure that the pure theory of law and its development was seen in 1934 when he published the book, but also in 1945 in another bestseller entitled The Theory of Law and the State. By separating the law from the state, Kelsen wants to make us believe that law can be understood using scientific approach and method and having the clear truth of law as science and the truth of science as explaining the truth of law. However, his great work that improved on the other book in 1967 on pure theory of law, Kelsen seeks to dismiss some of the opaque areas of his argumentation by drawing us closer to the reasons for which he believes that law should be understood as pure science. And by doing so, we have a lot to learn from Professor Kelsen. Such concepts as the consistency of the law, the supremacy of the law, and constitution constitutionality of the law come from the very founder of the line of thought, Professor Kelsen, in the analysis of the pyramid of law. In the pyramid, we see he divides the law into two, that is the superior law and the inferior law. In the normative sense, he sees 
the fundamental norms and the grand norms. And in the middle of the pyramid, he puts all other laws, the national laws, the enacted laws, and the contracts, or the law of contract. In the fundamental law, Kelsen speaks about the constitution, national constitution, and the international treaties, among others. However, still, the analysis of the concept of norms, Kelsen wants us to believe that grand norms are norms that are generated by the people in their individual uh, sets of existence, um, for instance, customary law, traditional laws of the people, and the principles of law, the precepts and the judicial traditions that people themselves uphold. These are indeed the grand norms. The grand norms must be able to inform and form the fundamental norms, and that is the constitution that has got the legitimacy of the people and its legality is drawn from the very scientific fact of the norm, norms that explain to us what it is in reality. Then the Acts of Parliament in the middle, not on top, should not be the supreme law and the supremacy of the constitution is what informs the rest of the laws. In the Republic of Kenya, of course, the Constitution of Kenya is the supreme law or the highest law in the land. And in that case, all other laws must be in accordance with the Constitution. In case of any inconsistency, then one can in interrogate the constitutionality of that kind of law. That is why the reason why the law can be declared unconstitutional insofar as it is seen to be inconsistent with the fundamental law. Well, whether Kelsen is right or wrong, that is a subject for another sitting. My assessment is that Kelsen has taught us the concept of consistency, the concept also of fundamental law and grand norms and how such norms build up into imputation of such norms to the laws that they define or they stand to prove. The scientific proof of the law and the nature of the law is the work of Kelsen. And Kelsen lived his ample life developing analytical jurisprudence of which he is the founder. However, still we still acknowledge his contribution to the development of the international jurisprudence and the international law. Kelsen also is concerned with the language of law, how we use the language of law. When somebody speaks saying that the constitution and the law, it is as though the constitution is not part of the law. Or somebody makes the following claim that the African customary law is not law. It all depends on the school of thought. If you belong to the positive school of thought of Professor John Austin, or you belong to the school of thought of Professor Hans Kelsen, that will determine your side of argument. But from the accounts of uh, Professor Kelsen, we come to agree that his contribution and achievement is monumental and it is knowledge for all times. Thank you for watching, Peter here. And remember to subscribe and also remember to follow me 
on other videos. Remember to put your remarks, your comments, your opinions, your thoughts about the pure theory of law. Bye for now.